was a tune called Monkey in the Dog Cart or Monkey on a Dog Cart. I like to choose tunes sometimes for the title and this title just uh, evoked images of carnivals and uh, 1920s sideshows and that kind of thing. If you enjoy this video and you'd like more, please consider joining my fiddle club on Patreon. This tune is in the key of C. So let's do a quick review of what that means. Key of C has no sharps or flats. So the shape that your hand has on the G string is this, because you've got A, B, from B to A to B is a whole step, B to C is a half step. So you've got A, B, C, D. On the D string, your second finger moves close to your first finger. On the A string, it stays the same. And then on the E string, we move the first finger back. If you can remember these shapes, that can cut down on the amount of thinking you have to do. So instead of going, oh, that's a C natural, I have to remember to put my second finger down, you just think this shape and all the notes on that string are going to just fall into this place. So let's start on C and go up all the way up to C. And then we're going to go back down and then we're going to keep going all the way to open G and back up to C. So that way we play all the notes on the violin in first position in this key. So here we go. We start with C, D, E, F, which is the half step, G, A, B, C, which is a half step, D, E, F, which is way back, G, A, B, which is a whole step, and now we're going to scooch up an extra half step with our fourth finger, and then back down again, A, G, pull way back for that F natural, E, D, C, B, A, G, F, E, D, C, and then we're going to keep going down B, which is now in the, what some people call high second finger position. All the other second fingers have been low. This time it's high. A, down to G, up to A, B, and landing on C. So that's your C major scale full range of the violin's notes, all four strings. So since this is in the key of C, there are a lot of times when you can play your open E along with the melody note. So the simple melody is So all through that, up until the very end, you can play your open E along with it. And I put my first finger down on the A string for this B so I can get so I can get a chord on that one. Something you can do in addition to those open E's to fiddle it up is to play that shuffle pattern. So when you do that, you get So I'm grazing the upper string on the amp. So I'm going one and a two and a so the B part we have that C that we just reached up for. So you can play that in a couple of different ways. You can just kind of uh, slide your fourth finger up for it. So coming at it from the end of the first part So I just, I just slid up. I didn't notice how I didn't shift up that time. I just moved my hand and I, it's kind of like I straightened everything out and that pushed my fourth finger forward. And I've heard a lot of recordings where they just kind of do this indiscriminate slide. It just kind of slide up and hope to land somewhere close to that note. I don't think it really matters a whole lot if you land on that note. I like to slide up to third position. So I'm going up to my third finger on the E string to find that C, and I'm taking my second finger along with me. It's because I've played a second finger down here, and then I'm going. 
So that second finger is right next to the third finger when I'm up there on the E string. They're kind of think of them as being a half step apart. They're on separate strings, but they feel like half step. So that's how I'm doing it. There's another one. And then a fun thing to do to make some variation in a fill tune is to go down to a lower octave if you can. Sometimes the tune is written so that you really can't, or you can do half of the tune down an octave, but this one you can easily play everything down an octave, and it gives you some opportunities for some different double stops or no double stops. So there I kept my third finger down my C that I just played and I just added the E. Great place for a slide. Another great place for a slide. Here's that shuffle. back up if you want to go back up again and every time where there's some space you can kind of add some extra notes that's one nice thing about if you practice it all the way through doing a shuffle pattern so if I just play kind of gets the bow going and once that bow gets going then the fingers want to fall off and so the fingers might start adding some extra things in there so wide open for possibilities you kind of think of these notes on the page as you know, your skeleton or your stepping stones and you can add something in between every single one if you want to so let's play this at a slower tempo we'll take this at 80 I find that I've been playing around with it so much that I don't always play what the page says, but I'm gonna give it my best shot and uh, play along with me. And then I'll let the backing track run and you can have fun on your own. Two, three, four.
Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.